Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Here's the problem I'm going to be doing today, kind of building on related rates. I know I've done quite a few of those recently, but here's another one I want to show you. This is a good related rates triangle problem. I actually found this problem in a book called Single Variable Calculus Concepts and Context by James Stewart. And this problem came from chapter 4.1 in the exercises. It's problem number 16. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description so you can go check that book out. I get a lot of the problems that I do on my channel from that book, but let's go ahead and jump into it. So the problem we have is a spotlight on the ground shines on a wall 12 meters away. If a man two meters tall walks away from the spotlight toward the building at a speed of 1.6 meters per second, how fast is the length of his shadow on the building decreasing when he is four meters from the building? So like I do with all of the related rates problems on my channel, and my website, you want to follow the same four step process. The first of those four steps is to draw a sketch of what you're dealing with. Pretty much just kind of sorting out all the information you're given and writing it out visually so that we have an idea of what kind of formulas to use, what shapes we're dealing with to come up with our equation. So let's start with the drawing. So here's a pretty good visualization of what was basically described in the problem. We have this spotlight, which is 12 meters away from the wall of this building. And then we have this man who's two meters tall and he's walking towards the building, basically from the spotlight towards the building. And we are essentially told that we want to figure out how quickly his shadow on the wall. So if you imagine the light shining from the spotlight over here, over towards this wall, the shadow would essentially go from the ground where his feet are and where the spotlight is up to a straight line from the spotlight to the top of his head and then kind of um, portray that onto or project that onto the wall over here. So basically his shadow will be this here, this side of the triangle here. As you imagine this man moving further along closer to the wall, this line that goes from the spotlight that's not moving over to this wall over here that's also not moving is going to slowly become smaller and smaller. Once he is standing right up against the wall, the height of his shadow on the wall would be the same as his height. So you could imagine this shadow, this side of the triangle here is essentially going to be slowly shrinking as this man gets closer and closer to the wall. There's a few things that I've labeled here. Um, First of all, the only two things that are constant throughout this problem is the distance between the spotlight to the wall. That's always going to be 12 meters because the spotlight and the wall are both not moving. So that's going to stay the same. And the height of the man is going to stay two meters the whole time. So these are the only two kind of side lengths within this triangle that are constant. As a result, you want to kind of label all the other things with variables, right? Like I just mentioned, the height of his shadow on the wall is going to shrink over time. So we have to call that some variable. We also know the distance between the spotlight and the man is going to change as he walks away from the spotlight. So I've labeled that as X. And then we also know the distance between the man and the wall is going to shrink over time as he walks closer to the wall. So I've labeled that as Y. We also know at the one instant we're looking at, we're concerned with basically the point where he is four meters away from the wall. So the one instant we're looking at is when Y happens to be four. Since we know the spotlight to the wall is 12 meters, if he's four meters from the wall, then that remaining distance between him and the spotlight would be eight meters. So at this one moment, X and Y are eight and four. However, we do want to label those two distances as variables because as time progresses, he's going to be moving and these two distances are going to change over time. So we do need to label them as variables. These 12 and 2 meters are not changing over time, so we don't have to call those variables. We can use constant. And then finally, we know the man is moving at a speed of 1.6 meters per second. 
So basically the distance between him and the wall is gonna be shrinking at a speed of 1.6 meters per second. And the distance between him and the spotlight is gonna grow at that same rate, 1.6 meters per second. So if you wanna think about how quickly Y and X are changing, basically Y is gonna shrink or become smaller at a rate of 1.6 meters per second. And X is gonna grow at a rate of 1.6 meters per second. So this is pretty much all the information we have. Now we wanna use this to go on to our second step, which is to come up with the equation that we're gonna to use to kind of model the information we're given. So the first thing you wanna think about when you're trying to come up with your equation is what is the question asking us to find? Well, the last sentence in the question said, how fast is the length of his shadow on the building decreasing when he is four meters from the building? So basically we're looking at how quickly this distance here is decreasing. So how quickly this distance is decreasing is essentially just gonna mean the rate of change of this distance. Well, the, that distance is represented by H. Therefore, the thing we're looking for is the rate of change of H with respect to time, which is the H dt. Since we don't want our equation to have any rates of change in it, we just want quantities like distances or measurements that are, you know, basically just lengths or something like that, or volumes or whatever it may be at a specific instant. So basically all I'm trying to say is we don't want dH dt in our equation. Instead, we're going to want to put H in our equation because once we move on to a further step and we take the derivative with respect to time, that will introduce the dH dt if we have an H in our original equation. So we know our equation needs to have an H in it. Then we also want to think about what other things it's okay to have in our equation. First of all, any constants are going to be okay because they're constant. We know their value and we also know their rate of change. If they're constant, their rate of change is zero. They're not changing. So both of these side lengths here, from here to here, as well as you could kind of picture this as a, a triangle. Picture this man as the vertical side of a triangle. So we basically have a small triangle kind of set within a larger triangle, right? So this triangle side length is okay to have in our equation. We know we have to have this triangle side length in our equation. It's also okay to have this triangle side length because that's the constant. And then we also can think about this smaller triangle side length. We know that that is represented by X, which we know at this one instant is eight meters. But not only that, we also know X's rate of change. We know what DX DT would be because we know how fast this man is walking. We know the spotlight's not moving. So we know this length right here from the man to the spotlight is increasing at the rate of 1.6 meters per second. So we know X, we know the rate of change of X. So X is a perfectly fine thing to have in our equation. By the same logic, we could have a Y in our equation also. So really all the quantities written out here are okay to put in our equation because we know the value of it at that moment and we also know its rate of change. Except for H of course, but we know we have to have that because that's the thing that we're looking for. Knowing that we have kind of these two different triangles which since they are kind of laid within each other, we know that this angle is 90 degrees as well as this angle is 90 degrees. We can kind of just assume the man is standing straight up and the wall is perfectly vertical. Since they obviously share this angle, that also tells us that this angle here is the same as this angle here. So what that means is these, this little triangle and this big triangle are similar triangles. So we can use that fact to come up with how ratios of their side lengths are related to each other. And what I mean by that is, if we take, for example, the right side length of our small triangle divided by this bottom side length of our small triangle, so 2 over x, that would be equivalent to the ratio between the right side length of our big triangle, which is h, divided by the bottom side length of our big triangle, which is 12. So since they're similar triangles, we know that these two ratios are equivalent to each other. We know that 2 over x equals h over 12. Now, this is a perfectly good equation to use for this uh, related rates problem because it has the thing we know has to be in there, and then it has the only other variable we know 
at the moment it's eight meters and we also know at that moment it's increasing at a rate of 1.6 meters per second so we know what x is at this moment and we also know its rate of change so this is a perfectly good equation to satisfy our second step so now we can go on to the third step of a related rates problem which is the implicit differentiation step so all we have to do is take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation before we do that though let's just kind of rewrite this um, there's kind of a couple ways we could do it but let's just rewrite it instead of writing everything in fractions let's just kind of rewrite things so that we have everything kind of on one line before we take the derivative so what i mean by that is we could think of 2 over x is the same as 2x to the negative 1 right dividing by something is the same as doing that thing to the negative 1 power so that's equivalent there and then here instead of thinking as h over 12 let's just kind of think of 1 12th as a coefficient in front of h so now when we take the derivative with respect to time of this, we can basically just do that using power rule and chain rule, right? We basically will need to treat x and h as functions of time. So when we take the derivative of the left side of our equation here, we can use power rule and chain rule. So chain rule says to take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, so we'll leave this blue x here alone and take the derivative of the outside so power rule says to bring the negative one down in front making this a negative two we'll leave our inside function the same which is just x we'll lower our power by one negative one minus one is negative two and then we'll multiply this by the chain rule by the derivative of our inside function the derivative of x is going to be dx dt because we're taking the derivative of x with respect to t now over on the right side of our equation this is a bit simpler because we just have a constant times some function of time. If you're taking the derivative of a constant times a function, that result would just be that constant times the derivative of that function. So we're just going to have 1 12 times the derivative of h with respect to time. So that is it for our implicit differentiation step. Now we can go on to our fourth step of solving for the desired rate of change. Remember, what we're looking for is dh dt. So now we can solve for dh dt. So to get dh dt by itself, all we really need to do is multiply one, both sides by 12. So if we multiply both sides by 12, that'll cancel out our 1 12th over here. And we'll just have dh dt equals 12 times all this. So doing that will give us negative 2 times 12 over x squared times dx dt. All I really did here with the x squared down here, having x raised up to the negative second is the same as dividing by x to the positive second power, right? Having a negative exponent basically just means it's moved to the denominator. So when we multiply the 12 over here, we have the negative 2 still right here, the 12 that we just multiplied from the other side, and then the x to the negative 2, I just changed that to divided by x to the positive 2. And then we still have our times dx dt. So now we've already isolated our dh dt. Now we can pretty much plug in these other variables and simplify that. So if we plug in x, we know at this moment x is 8 meters. So we can change this to an 8. And we also know that x, which is the distance between the spotlight and the man, is increasing at a rate of 1.6 meters per second. So we can change this to 1.6. So now we can just simplify this or basically plug it into a calculator. And that tells us that dh dt is negative 0.6. However, this is not necessarily your answer because let's think for a second what the question asks us to find. The question said, how fast is the length of his shadow on the building decreasing when he is four meters from the building? So we're trying to figure out how fast this distance is decreasing. Notice the word decreasing is really the key word there. We just figured out that this distance is changing at a rate of negative 0.6 meters per second. But the question asks how fast is it decreasing? So we don't need the negative sign. The shadow is decreasing at a rate of 0.6 meters per second. So that would be our answer. So basically dropping the negative because the word decreasing already kind of implies that negative in front of it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel. It's 
a great way to help support the channel so I can keep making more videos like this for you. See you next time.